Welcome students to the tutorial on creating a movie poster, simplistic movie poster in Illustrator. This is going to be a two-part um, presentation and this part is part one. The first thing that you're going to do in creating your poster is you're going to go ahead and open a new file and we're just going to go ahead and create a regular poster size, which is an eight and a half, which is an eight and a half um, by eleven and a half in inches. And we're going to go ahead and say create. In this particular assignment, we're going to learn a few things. Um, we are going to take a look at your tracing tool again, as well as we are going to go ahead and use our um, typing um, topography tool for font and we're also going to look at our artboards and using our artboards to show our work. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to find an inspiration style poster and I've decided to use as my inspiration the movie Elf and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my inspiration tools or my inspiration pieces so I have something to follow that I can look at right in my document. So as I'm opening these you're going to see that I have my original ELF poster that's here is my inspiration um, and then I have some other things that I have created um, within Photoshop and Illustrator, sorry about that, Photoshop and Illustrator um, that I'm going to use as well. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to have a blank background on this, um, maybe a background that's going to show some, some color. And so for that, I'm going to use my shape tool. And remember when we are working in Illustrator, it's like working with a canvas. And so you need to paint over your canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that whole piece. And as you can see, it's white because the fill over here is white. And then it does have a black stroke at one point on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my Garniant um, tool here and you'll notice that I'm going to go ahead and my Garniant brush came up over here. If you can't find some of the pieces that you need in order to create what you want, if you go under the window tool you're going to see that you've got extra windows to help you here. So for instance, you couldn't see your um, color tool. If you click on the color, um, it is going to bring up this color window for you if you wanted easy access to it. So over here, you can really customize whatever you want it to be. You can also see on the top that mine automatically came in as topography. For our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put it to essentials. That's going to change and it's going to give me the default of what the essential tools are over here in the layers, in the libraries, and of course the properties. Now going back to the window because I do want to see those colors, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my color tool, my color guide. Um, as I said, I wanted to do a Garniant on this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose a nice kind of wintry, wintry blue, maybe something not so dark and stark and um, I'm going to give this uh, a gradient color and to do that um, I'm going to change my color palette here. Oh, that's not working. Well, this one's not working for me. I'm not sure why. Oh, there we go. Um, so as you can see, <clears throat> it wasn't working for a second. When I bring up my gradient tool, it's going to give me this kind of span here. And it automatically comes in gray and black. But if I click on the gradient slider and I click on the swatches, it's going to bring up a few different colors for me. I can also say what I want that um, opacity to be within there. Now, because I want this to kind of angle a little bit differently, I might do the soft tones in the circle, but again, it automatically goes to the white to, to black. I click on those again, change it to my blue. 
I have to change each one of these to those colors that I'm looking for. So maybe I go a little darker blue, and maybe here I just go with a white, and it gives me kind of this tone here. So that's using the gradient um, if I wanted to use the gradient. If I want to go back, I just go ahead and do my Control Z to go all the way back. Now, let's say I wanted more of a green color. I can go ahead and I can choose that, kind of a green color. And I think that one works. And let's say I wanted it not to be so, so white, but just a little bit of white there. I might do something like that to give it a little bit of an effect. Now that I have that done, you'll notice that um, I'm going to go ahead and just click off the screen. Now this is my background for my poster. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to show you how to create artboards. Artboards are used in order to show what you're working on. When I click on the artboard tool, which is on the left hand side, almost down to the bottom right above, to above your, your colors and your fill and your strokes, this artboard tool says my very first piece here is my number one artboard. If I wanted to create additional artboards, I could. I come right outside into the gray area and I create those additional artboards. You'll also see this technique being used in your tutorial for the um, um, infographic. Because I'm using ELF as my um, inspiration, oops, because I'm using the ELF poster as my inspiration, I'm going to actually try <laughs> to select just ELF and drag him over into my artboard on this page. Now you can see I'm starting to finish up on my tracing of um, ELF here. Just a little. Tracing does take quite a bit of time uh, to master. You're not going to be being a tracing professional um, your first time through. So have patience with it. it it'll come. Um, it just does take a little bit of time. Once I'm done and I've um, separated all my pieces in my anchor, I can check to see how I did with my tracing a couple different ways. Control minus helps us zoom out on what we're working with. And I can go ahead and I can move my ELF picture up. And then you can see left is, as I control plus to zoom in, I can see that my tracing now is left. You can see that it is in a, in a um, gradient. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a green color. Um, I'm actually going to choose and pick a uh, pick a color um, for him out of the elf outfit. That might be a little too dark. That one looks pretty good. Um, and all I did was I chose the color that I wanted, um, which is this. Um, I, I chose my fill, and then I picked my eyedropper and I went somewhere into the elf poster to choose a green just by clicking. Um, and so now I've got this really nice green that matches um, the poster here and should stand out in the green of my piece. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag using my, my selection tool. I'm going to drag my trace. Oops. I'm going to drag my trace right onto my poster. And I can go ahead and I can do a proportional. Um, to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to control minus to zoom out to see and make sure I've got him in my picture. Um, it looks like he's a little bit tall here, so I'm just going to proportion him down just a little bit. And I like that. That looks pretty good. I think I might want to just give him a little bit of uh, emphasis, and I'm going to give him um, a stroke line around him. And I think black would look really nice as that stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now looking at the stroke, I can say, well, that stroke is really fine. Maybe I want it a little bit darker. 
If I go over into my properties, you can kind of see that you're going to have this appearance um, for your fill stroke. And I'm going to go ahead and change that stroke to a 2 just to give it a lot more depth to it. So now you can see how I've created my elf. Now you'll see that I didn't do the cutout of the arms and that's okay because we're creating a simplistic poster. So the things that we've learned here is we've gone back and used our tracing tool. We've learned how to use the Garnian tool. We've learned how to put the shape and use it as the background. We've learned how to create the artboard and we'll continue with artboards in step two. And we're gonna talk a lot about the font and using font styles in step two, as well as bringing things in that we might have Photoshopped into our simplistic poster of ELF. So this is the end of part one of your simplistic um, movie poster. It is time to now look at your movie poster, simplistic movie poster part two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and expand my elf and I'm holding on to my shift alt tool and, and dragging to expand my elf because I'm going to trace him out. Um, he is my inspiration, but I'm also going to use his body um, to trace. So I'm going to start the trace, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and pause um, the taping, and then you'll be able to see the end of the tracing piece. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on ALF, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start by tracing by using my pen tool at the top. Starting at the top of his hat, I'm going to go down and trace to the bottom. And because there is an arc here, as we learned in our Benzie, I'm going to curve just a little bit around him. And actually, because I don't want this to fill in, I'm going to go ahead and um, switch these around. And you can see that now I'm just using with my with my exercise that I learned in Benzi of how to create a trace around an item. And this one I'm going to drag because I'm going to, um, for his elbow, come back to the center. And I'm not perfect um, with my tracing, but I want to get as close as I possibly can in my tracing to the item that I am do using here. Okay, so I'm going to continue with my trace and when we come back after this short um, piece, then you'll see the end.